Howdy folks, Tex Scrabner here with Tex Scrabner Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready to make it weird because we're going to be doing an audiobook review today. Now, I'm not sponsored by Audible.com, at least not yet, but I probably should be because darned if I haven't spent a whole bunch of money on audiobooks over the years and had an Audible account since literally I can't remember when. I used to download Audible books when I still had an iPod, if that tells you how far back that I've had an audiobook account with Audible. However, with everything that's crazy going on in the world right now, I figured that this might just be some lighthearted fun. And if you guys like this type of video and you want me to go through the rest of the books in the trilogy that I'm going to be talking about, please let me know because... You're probably going to get the reviews whether you like it or not. So anyways, we're going to be talking about the Heart of Scars trilogy, as I call it, the Autobiography of a Werewolf Hunter, book one. Now, this book came out when I was back in high school. It was originally published under Autumn Moon or When the Autumn Moon is Bright. And then in its second edition, the title got changed to Autobiography of a Werewolf Hunter. So we'll get to that here in a second. Now, I am still sponsored by Three Rivers Archery. So if you guys want to get a discount on all your trad life supplies, you can go to threeriversarchery.com. Use the code of TexGrebner in your checkout. That will give you a small discount on your shipping. And it will more importantly show your support for Tex Grebner Outdoor to my sponsor of Three Rivers Archery. If you guys want to support the channel in a way beyond simply watching the videos, you can go to TexGrebnerOutdoors.com. Check out the Make It Weird sticker, the Make It Weird shirt, the Life Ain't Like the Pornos, Hunting Ain't Like the TV Show shirt, and of course my personal favorite, the Kill With Stick shirt. Now I know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world and money's tight for everybody. So if it makes a difference, don't bother doing it. I'm not here to panhandle for your money. Especially seeing as I really hope that you guys enjoy this audiobook review and that you get into this series. So if there's only enough money to go around, don't worry about spending it on me. So I prefer to call it the Heart of Scars trilogy because that is the Indian name of the main character in the autobiography of a werewolf hunter, Sylvester Logan James. His Native American name or First Nation or Aboriginal name because he's technically Canadian. So anyhow, the autobiography of a werewolf hunter. The best recommendation that I can give this material is if you like stories where the hero ain't really a hero and he ain't afraid to get bloody, well then this story is for you. Because he who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man is not just an Avenged Sevenfold lyric, okay? It's an old, old literary reference. Also, if you're familiar with Nietzsche, beware you who gaze into the abyss because the abyss gazes back into you. Now, the reason that those quotes are important is because this book and this entire book series is a blood feud. Now, for the sake of this series, you're going to suspend your disbelief and assume that werewolves are real. So the book series starts out in the first book where Sylvester Logan James, which is a hell of a name, but Sylvester Logan James and his father are running a trap line in the Alberta wilderness and they get attacked by a werewolf. Sylvester's father gets killed and so now he's orphaned because his mother died giving birth to him. And this is basically in the 60s right now. He's 12 years old when his father is killed by a werewolf. And Sylvester is hiding up in a pine tree. Well, he is found and rescued by this old Northern Cheyenne mystic named Michael Winterfox. And Michael gives Sylvester a choice. And Sylvester decides that he wants to be trained to be a Radosnan Cheyenne dog soldier, basically a First Nation Aboriginal Special Forces warrior with a spiritual component. So that is a brutal, grueling training process. 
And Sylvester wants to pursue his blood feud against the beast, the Therion, the lineage. He gets trained. He goes to the Vietnam War to see some real-world combat. He then comes home from the war and starts up a family. Spoiler alert, it doesn't end well for his wife and son. So now not only does he feud against the werewolf kind because they killed his father, but he is now slipping into madness because of the loss of his wife and his son at the hands of a werewolf. So the book follows his journey across both Canada and the United States, and it is violent. Of course, it should be violent because, you know, the only reason that Cormac McCarthy is considered a good author is because in No Country for Old Men or Blood Meridian, Cormac McCarthy is an okay writer, but people think he's good because he's not afraid to take it up to 11. And the author of the autobiography of a werewolf hunter trilogy, Brian P. Easton, in my opinion, is a better writer than Cormac McCarthy. Easily challenged opinion, but there you go. Because Brian P. Easton has a great, well-fleshed-out mythology in his in-book universe, and he also is not afraid to take things up to 11. Imagine if you basically pull into a trailer park full of hillbilly werewolves in the middle of God knows where Nevada, like the hills have eyes. And the problem with the werewolf, really, the problem is nobody believes in what Sylvester is hunting. So long story short, this book came out when I was in high school and I couldn't get into it until it finally became an audiobook trilogy, and it's narrated in Audible by Basil Sands, who just is an excellent voice for not only Sylvester, but all the characters get a unique voice. So I hope that you guys are going to check out Autobiography of a Werewolf Hunter on Audible. I hope that this video has helped you make up your mind. And I hope that you guys are going to enjoy the subsequent book reviews on the other Brian P. Easton novels because it's super surreal for me because I got these books when I was in high school. And don't get me wrong, right? Like, I'm not saying Sylvester is somebody that you should look up to because he's basically a high-functioning psychotic. But based off of what he's gone through, I mean, can you really blame him? Now, I have gotten in touch with Brian, and he actually lives like 60 miles down the road from me. And the reason that it's surreal is because I'm actually one of his consultants, even though I'm not being paid, on the Winter Fox trilogy, which is surreal and flattering for me because my whole life I've just been this wellspring of absolutely worthless weaponry and occult knowledge of folklore that finally I have an outlet for. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this book review, and I hope that you guys will check out the autobiography of a werewolf hunter. As always, God bless all my sports of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at threeriversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those who are involved in law enforcement and those who serve in the military. Thanks for watching Tech Scrab near outdoors.